And we welcome back to the Grandy Group, Tony Blankley, who is the Executive Vice President of Edelman Public Relations. His latest book is called American Grit. We've got a column that he's written called uh, A Lot of Nonsense in Egypt. And, reminder, Tony will be hosting the weekend show from 4 to 7 this Saturday. Did I get everything in, Tony? Yes, you did. The, the only thing I would say is the headline was not mine. Okay, I know. <laughs> All right, but but I but I've got the piece in front yeah. of me, and you're obviously very skeptical. And I'm now quoting uh, from you. Yeah. This is the way you end your piece. There is a lot of dreamy nonsense yeah. trying to pass for foreign policy at the moment. You're talking about apparently our our approach towards the Egyptian situation. The uh, the the bill for such illusions will come due probably sooner rather than later. As Jean-Paul Sartre reminded us, we all have an obligation not to act in bad faith by deceiving ourselves, however lamentable the truth may be. Are we deceiving ourselves by thinking that democracy can take root in Egypt as we know it? Well, I'm inclined to think we are. Now, look, I think any of us who try to predict what the future is going to unfold should be pretty modest in our predictions. But what's concerned me so much in in these last two weeks is that so many people, both commentators and I think our government or parts of our government, are letting their hope replace their judgment. And everybody would love to see a Western-oriented uh, democracy emerge. Of course, that's not the question whether we hope for that. The question is, what's the most likely outcome, and what should we be doing to try to nudge it towards uh, an outcome that's, that's better for us than one that's worse for us? And that's where this, ho- this, this talk of, oh, sure, let's go for democracy, and in the process, undercutting publicly as well as privately a 30-year ally, I think has been such a, a big mistake. And you're, you're now seeing, I think, our administration back off a little bit from its public uh, pummeling of, of, uh, of Mubarak. Uh, you've seen a kind of a pointing contest between the State Department and the White House, uh, mm-hmm. the spokesman for the White House. Uh, in in the last 72 hours, as uh, Hillary Clinton has been backing towards, let's give Mubarak more time, while um, Gibbs, the president's spokesman, was talking about now means yesterday, as far as moving the transition along. And now we have, uh, since I wrote my column, uh, reporting of of what the, the Saudi king has been privately imploring our government to do, which is what I wrote about in my column last week, which was we've got to respect our ally because we're going to ha- we have allies around the world and we want future allies. Yeah. And if and if we're seen to be cutting them off at the knees at the first time of trouble, uh, irrespective of what happens in Egypt, we damage our value as a trusted ally around the world now and into the future. You know, far be it from me to add uh, the aspirations of the Egyptian people to this. Uh, particularly if they're getting in the way of American strategic interests. But I have a poll in front of me this morning that uh, I got before I came to work that was taken of Egyptians after the crisis began. And apparently, even the um, the rank-and-file Egyptian citizens, the people who obviously assembled in Tahrir Square, are saying their views of America are that we should continue good relations with the United States. They themselves are not saying... All we care about is establishing democracy. This poll goes on to say that they're not that crazy about Mohammed el Baradai. They're even not that crazy about the Muslim Brotherhood, assuming government, which tells me that what they want is stability and safety, maybe in lieu of democracy, at least for the time being. Well, yeah, I mean, it, you know how hard it is in American politics for us who have been working in it politics for, for our, most of our life to predict a vote in Congress, the attitude of the public in, yeah. in New Jersey. Hey, yeah, ask John Boehner about that for the yeah. last two days. And the idea that the Egyptian, you know, that we know what the Egyptian people want, mm-hmm. obviously, uh, is pretty dubious. I know there's a poll out, I'm not sure, I don't think it was the one you're mentioning, but there was one out that only polled in uh, Cairo, Alexandria, and one other city. And that, of course, is where the most secular votes are. Sure. Uh, it's in the countryside that you have much more uh, traditional uh, thinking going on. So if you've got a poll that, that is coming from the cities that is not showing uh, a cry for democracy, you can only imagine what it is when you include the, eight, the 80% of the public that lives in villages and rural settings in Egypt. This, this actually, I've got the data in front of me. The results of the poll are taken from nearly 350 interviews selected by random digit dialing of both landline and cell phones in Cairo and Alexandria. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's the poll. So, so that is the most 
liberal, Western-oriented, secular part of the of the electorate. So I think it's about 22 percent of the electorate live in the big cities. You're right. And about 78 percent live live in the countryside. And so that's going to be more pro-democracy than you're going to get over the country. And it's, and it's a you know you. Obviously, it's much harder to poll Egyptians in the, around the countryside and, and 350 samples for a population of 80 million. And not surprisingly, the, the people polled in this survey also don't want to go to war with Israel. So what is the solution then, Tony? I mean, how do you, how do you prop up a... Go- I don't think we have a lot of solutions. I don't think we, we're in a powerful position. But we are in a substantial position to, to certainly support the military, which isn't a, a cure-all. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's not a cure at all. The Turkish army, which was built by Ataturk to defend secularism stayed in the barracks in 2002 when when the Turkish government went Islamist and have and, and then and then the, the Islamist politicians went after the Turkish army they they arrested a few for for corruption the Turkish army did nothing so that was the great institution that we were relying on in Turkey and it was not able to turn it back so I don't I'm not saying that the Egyptian army you know it can do anything we hope it will do but if there is a force for stability and for paying a bit more attention to American, Israeli, and world Western interests in, in that part of the world. I think it is the army, and uh, we, we should be working. And we have a tremendously close working relationship with them over the years and currently, and that should be the vehicle rather than the constant statements. A lot of them, not so much from the president, but from his spokespeople, uh, really insulting to, to the Egyptian, current Egyptian government. That's not useful. Mm-hmm. Okay, I have to ask you, because I, as you, we pointed out, you're going to host the show on Saturday. You'll probably get a call on this. As a former communication director for Speaker Gingrich and a public relations vice president right now, I have to ask you, yeah, okay. did you think in your lifetime you would ever see a member of Congress have to reside, resign because he outed himself on Craigslist? I, you know, it, it's... It is amazing. Uh, <laughs> or I, not. I, 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 you wonder what, I mean, look, you and I both know plenty of congressmen who have done an awful lot of goofy things. Mm-hmm. So uh, there is precedent for poor judgment amongst, amongst Congress people. But <laughs> this one seems so completely likely to be exposed that uh, there's almost like, a, a, it, not a death wish, but a, a wish to have his career yeah. Ended pretty quickly. Yeah, we said death by the internet or suicide by yeah, the internet. Yeah, it's it's cyber suicide is what yeah, he's doing. That's a better phrase. <laughs> well, I, I I don't know. I mean, you've been around for a long time. You've seen plenty of bad behavior, but I, you know, aren't you kind of nostalgic for the for the raincoat and no pants? I mean, <laughs> <laughs> to me, it just I'm not sure technology is serving you. Too much on in, in a hill bar. Yeah, yeah, that, that's a fine old tradition. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Or dancing around. A, By the way, that will never change. Uh, dancing around naked in a water fountain with a stripper or whatever. That was those were the good old <laughs> <Yeah>. days. <laughs> where's Where's Fanny Fox when you really need her? All right. Thank you, Tony. As always, we'll be listening on Saturday, four to seven. You'll be hosting here on six thirty WML. Thanks, Tony. Great, Thanks. Tony.